I want to recreate Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway in a, as historically accurate a manner as possible, using my own self as the canvas for this art. That is the goal. If your question is why, I don't know that this video is for you, or even potentially my entire channel. So I began my research um, with this helpful, yes I printed it out, I will, I don't remember the artist's name off the top of my head, but I will put it on the screen, I will link this, their Tumblr post where this, they put this. This was immensely helpful to me, it is a, just a drawing of all of her different outfits. I have been looking at this constantly, it's an amazing way to get an overview of her style, and luckily for me it is actually extremely formulaic. A lot of these outfits are kind of variations of similar things, so I was confident that it would be decently easy to reproduce from looking at this picture. However, I needed to go deeper. What makes the artist who did this just such a beautiful, miraculous angel is that they cite their sources. The chapters that these outfits are from are listed, which made it very easy for me to go to the primary text and select every passage in which Ebony describes her outfits. I have analyzed the text and I believe I have distilled the integral parts of Ebony Darkness to Metro Ravenway. I am not going to give you a modernized, TikTok-worthy Ebony Darkness in like a choker and platform boots and perfect goth makeup. This is like 2005, 2006. She is a ratty DIY pre-makeup tutorials, pre-Instagram emo queen. And I am about historical accuracy. I am doing this because I'm a historian. But before we dive any deeper into the mystifying world of Ebony Darkness to Metro Ravenway, I need to tell you a little bit about this week's sponsor, Audible. Hello. Oh. Hi! Get out of here! This is the <laughs> Audible Den! I'm sorry. God, Draco is so annoying sometimes. Audiobooks are amazing and I love them. I'm always listening to one when I'm doing tasks. Cleaning, doing the dishes, gluing 666 onto the butt of a skirt. Everyday tasks. I absolutely love to read, but being an adult is hard and time consuming and audiobooks are absolutely my secret to still getting through as many books as I do. One of my favorite books that I read this year was called Gideon the Ninth. I enjoyed it so much that I also went back and listened to the audiobook and I keep it on my phone and sometimes I listen to it over again because it is so good and I think personally that you should go get an Audible membership and use your first credit on that book because but don't worry about it because after that you'll continue to get one free credit towards a free audiobook every single month and those books will be yours to keep forever even if you cancel your membership in the future. As an Audible member you will also have access to Audible's Plus catalog with thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks for better rest, oh my god that's the first time I said that in one take, and more, all included within the membership. So head on over to audible.com slash strangeons or text strangeons to 500, 500 to start your 30 day free trial, get one free audiobook, and explore the Plus catalog. And now back to Ebony. Also, luckily for me, my own style is not exactly what Ebony herself would describe as preppy. Um, there's a lot of things that I already owned that I knew that I could use for this. However, I did go shopping to make sure that I would have a few staples from her wardrobe that I knew I was missing, because a lot of the items that she describes are just so specific. Like, sometimes, like, she invents- okay. She's constantly inventing band merch that doesn't fucking exist. Wait a second. What's my code for this? Made up band merch. I highlighted in, in blue. Okay. Black high-heeled boots with pictures of Billy Joe Armstrong on them. Boots that said Joel all over them in blood red letters. That's Joel Madden, the lead singer of uh, Good Charlotte. A sexy black MCR corset. Like, as far as I know, My Chemical Romance never made uh, branded sexy corsets. She's very particular. So I knew that I wasn't going to just be able to find a lot of the items that she describes out there in the wild. So I wasn't looking for perfect items or even really anything that fit me. I knew that I was going to have to use my limited sewing ability to make the vision happen. So I was looking for things with potential, materials, leather, black lace, that kind of thing. I'm still missing a little red lace. I want to find some red lace to just truly complete some of these outfits, or maybe some purple. I actually ended up finding it super fun to shop for something, shop for someone else's style entirely, just completely outside of my comfort zone. The most key difference between Ebony's brand of all black wearing, MCR listening rat child, and mine is her, that hers I would say is more slutty? I put on a black leather shirt that showed off my boobs and a tiny matching mini skirt that said simple plan on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. I'm sorry, Ebony. I did I did not mean to slut shame. I slutty endearing. Slutty slutty complimentary. Ebony likes to show off her body, likes to show off her boobs. I don't have any. But I am an artist and a historian and I will make do. Let's begin. Hi. My name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway and I have long black ebony hair, that's how I got my name, with purple streaks and red tips. I do have ebony hair, although it is not long enough to reach my mid-back. I own hair extensions, although I almost never wear them, but I'll break them up for this occasion. And I also bought red and purple hair extensions. I don't know how I'm gonna give the illusion of red tips quite yet. I dug this out in the 
in the spirit of Ebony Darkness. Someone sent this to my P.O. box a very long time ago. Um, it just says, a lot of preps stared at me. I stuck my middle finger up at them, and it's a lovely drawing of our girl. Um, and I, I, as soon as I pulled it out, I was like, oh, that's interesting, because she's depicted with, like, arrow-shaped bangs. And for a minute, I was like, should I? But no. One, I don't think it would look great on me. Um, two, historical accuracy. We know which haircut she would have had. My bangs are desperately in need of a trim, and I've been letting them go because I want to try and be able to achieve that. Hello, rat. Hello, rat. And icy blue eyes, like limpid tears. And a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. Author's note, if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. Amy Lee is the lead singer of Evanescence, uh, the band that did the song, My Immortal, Wake Me Up Inside, etc, etc. My eyes are green, and we're just gonna have to work with that. I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was, because he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England, where I'm in the seventh year, I'm 17. I'm a goth. In case you couldn't tell, I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic and I buy all of my clothes from there. Wearing all black, I can absolutely get down with. That's probably the thing about this that is the most inside of my comfort zone. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it and a black mini skirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. My first outfit I think I will try be trying to recreate this one. I bought this like black corset top with some lace around it. I will be pairing it with this black leather mini skirt, which I got at Value Village. It was like 10 sizes too big for me and went down past my knees. But what can I say? I transformed it. I will be pairing them with these red fishnets instead of pink fishnets with my cat finds. Very intriguing right now. Sir, if you rip these, that's kind of okay, actually. Good job, son. You're helping. Black combat boots, again, a part of this style that I can absolutely get down with. I have my worn to shit pair of Black Doc Martens. Makeup, I'm not too worried about. I was a connoisseur of the emo eyeliner back in my day. On the topic of white foundation, I think there are, there are multiple ways uh, to interpret such a phrase. If you're familiar with the internet historian version of My Immortal, which I know many people in my life are because I love to show it to everyone because I love it. I think it's a very fun way to consume My Immortal, although warning, it is abridged from the original. Uh, for example, it leaves out the chapter, this, this interesting little outlier here where her account was apparently hacked. The writer's account is apparently hacked, and the hacker writes a chapter where Ebony goes to hell and is forced to wear Hollister clothing. I still recommend referring to the primary text, even if your introduction is the internet historian version. What I'm trying to say, the internet historian version takes the stance that by white foundation we mean clown white, probably because that's the funniest interpretation, which I will not fault them for. However, by white foundation she could mean very pale foundation to match her white vampire-y skin, so, if not clown white, I am perhaps biased uh, for the sake of my pores, but I think this is genuinely probably a more accurate interpretation, is that she's simply trying to say that she's a very pale white vampire complexion and that she put on foundation that matched her skin tone. Either way, this is probably going to be my least favorite part, because I have not worn foundation in years, it just it does not agree with my extremely acne-prone skin. But alas, I am, well, it's, it's summer, I'm a little tanned right now, so I did purchase some ivory white foundation from the drugstore. There, there are some outfits in here that she makes up that are just quite baffling. I woke up the next day, I was in my coffin, so I opened the door. I was wearing black lacy leather pajamas. Leather pajamas? That's not com- that can't possibly be comfortable. You're like cooking yourself in there. That coffin is a pressure cooker and you are a chicken. I was wearing a black corset with purple stuff on it fishnet suckings, and a black leather thong underneath. I put on black leather outfit thingy, kinda like the one Selene has in Underworld. If you haven't heard of it, then fuck you. I have actually, I have had the misfortune. That's an extremely 2000s reference, though. I was wearing a black leather night gun. I don't know what to do with this, Ebony. I, I don't know what to do with this. That being said, She's got some good ideas too. I took out the clothes from the bag. It was a gothic black leather mini skirt that said 666 on the back. OMG fangs, I said hugging him in a gothic way. I took the clothes in the bag. I have no objection to this one. This was another skirt that I got like a million sizes too big um, from Value Village um, and I sewed it to be my size and I want to rip it a little bit more and the 666 lettering is leftover fabric from my Converse pants. So one of the letters, I used too much glue and it's like seeping through and looks darker. I could argue in the spirit of academics that this adds to the aesthetic, and I will. For my next outfit, I wanted to do some kind of long dress, more formal kind of thing. I bought this black 
longish dress. It goes almost down to my ankles, I think. It was very much just a bag, just a sack, just a black sack when I bought it from Value Village. I made it as tight as I possibly could without adding a zipper to the back, which I don't feel like doing. And I added a thigh slit because that is definitely a staple of her long dresses. Ideally, I want to find some red lace to add around it. And I have this corset thing that I'm gonna put around it. It's a little bit difficult sometimes to describe exactly what she is talking about with some of her outfits. Like, I got up and put on a black tight sexa dress that was all ripped at the end. There was red corset stuff going up de front and de back, and it came up to my knees. There was a slit in the dress, like in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Just having corset stuff on it is it's quite a common description, actually, and it's a little frustrating, but I have interpreted that as I will put a corset around it. So this is also probably going to be the look where I um, go ham on the purple hair extensions because in chapter six, she says, the next day I woke up in my coffin, I put on a black leather mini skirt that was all ripped around the end and a matching top with red skulls all over it and high heeled boots that were black. I don't think there's been a single spelling mistake in this chapter. What is up with this? I put on two pairs of skull earrings, two crosses in my ears. I spray painted my hair with purple. So I'm gonna make my hair more purple than usual. These are my high heeled black boots. They're just my high heeled black boots. In most of her outfits, she alternates between combat boots and some variety of high-heeled black boots. The next outfit is based um, mostly on the chapter 3940 outfit and the chapter 42 outfit. Um, I got very excited when I read these two descriptions in close succession because I could have done something very along those lines easily just out of my own closet without any research or purchases. I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt, a black leather mini with black lace and Congress shoes. Um, now that I know that the, that probably means Converse shoes, that's even closer to my own regular wardrobe. And chapter 42, she says she was wearing a black plaid mini skirt with hot pink fishnets, a sexy black MCR corset, and black stiletto boots with pink pentagrams on them. If we sort of squint, if we sort of combine these two outfits, then that makes, I guess, the outfit among this selection that is the most in my comfort zone that I have probably worn before. Um, okay, I will show it to you. For the outfit with the fishnet shirt under the My Chemical Romance t-shirt, um, the author draws it as just a My Chemical Romance teacher and adds a little note that there's a black fishnet shirt underneath. That's what's been done for a few of these outfits. If she describes what she's wearing, like underneath, there'll just be a little note that's like, this is what she describes wearing underneath because it's obviously not on the outside of the outfit. So I would disagree with this interpretation. When I think about a fishnet shirt under a t-shirt, I think about a long sleeve fishnet shirt that is visible. So for this outfit, I will be wearing my fishnet shirt um, you can easily make one of these out of fishnet tights, by there's like a million tutorials online. Um, but this one, I believe, is just a fishnet shirt that I forget, I forget where I got it. I think I ripped it myself, though. My trusty MCR t-shirt, um, and this skirt, which is the only skirt that I owned prior to this video. So for accessories, in chapter two, she mentions wearing a pentagram necklace and putting on four pairs of earrings in my pierced ears. In chapter 11, she wears six pairs of skull earrings. I think she has cross earrings at one point. In chapter six, she has some cross earrings. Um, and earrings that have the Satanist symbol on them in chapter 42. So taking inspiration from that, I've decided to incorporate a pentagram necklace, some skull earrings, some pentagram earrings, and these cross earrings. Ebony is never described as having stretched ears, but I'm not, can't really unstretch them. And since I am to be going about my day doing my regular activities in these outfits, um, I will probably need a bag. So I've selected this bag. Ebony never describes any sort of bag that she uses ever in the fan fiction, I don't think. This one felt accurate to me. It is black leather. It reminds me a lot of, it's like it's around a similar size and shape to a bag that was my staple bag back in my emo years. I got it at Hot Topic. It had pink sugar skulls on it. Every couple of years I go back and read like my old middle school journals and stuff. And there's, there's these lines that like haunt me now. I'll be talking about like going out to hang out with my friends and I'll be like, I put on my eyeliner and straightened my bangs and I got my mini skull backpack and I'm like, this is my immortal. Did I write my immortal in a fugue state when I was 12? Conspiracy theories all ended. It was me. I wrote my immortal. The next day. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven White and I have long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name. With purple streaks and red tips. <laughs> my original plan was to dye like the top half of these red hair extensions black, but they are not hair. Therefore hair dye was not really gonna work on them. They are plastic. And when I went to rinse them out, all of the dye just slid right off. So this is the approximation of red tips and purple streaks that I've gone with. I added the purple streaks closer to the top of my head and I added the red streaks around the bottom. Black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. Okay, we have an update on the white foundation situation. I was gonna use this. However, in the drugstore clearance bin alongside a bunch of horrendously ugly lipstick shades, I discovered this. 
And I figured I'm gonna need it eventually because I'm gonna be Morticia Adams for Halloween. So I'm gonna possibly mix it with this one. We're gonna see how this goes. Oh, oh, I look like I'm glowing. I feel like I need to change my settings to adjust for this. But now you can't appreciate how glowing it is. I should just turn it all the way up. There we go. There she is. She would use these filters on photos probably. Sir, please, please sir. Yeah, okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. You're the real star. You're so fucking cute. How dare you? How, how, literally how am I supposed to focus like this? What are you doing? I don't exactly own any red eyeshadow, so I'm just using some lipstick and I'm just smearing it around with my fingers. Now we're on to the main event, black eyeliner. So like I said, I'm a connoisseur of the just black eyeliner look. I've been wearing it since the seventh grade uh, and thankfully over the years, I think I've discovered what really works for my eyes, what looks good. Um, and now it's time to forget, forget all of that knowledge and go back to what I was doing around the seventh grade. And she really just says she wears black eyeliner. So besides the fact that it needs to be bad, it is quite up to interpretation. We need more, we need more red, we need more lipstick, just finger painting, just going ham, just, just no technique, feels good. I might need to make this worse. I almost don't like the sharpness of the wing. Like I want it to be more of just like a fucking blob. It's good. That's good shit. Washing your hands is for the week. Going to the bathroom to correct things with a Q-tip is for the week. We commit like the girl bosses that we are. Horrible. This is horrible. Okay, I'm pleased with the makeup. There she is. Ebony darkness. Yes, that's it. After the makeup, there was only one thing left to do. Put on a black corset with black lace on it and a black leather mini skirt, red fishnets, black combat boots, and pentagram earrings in my ears. I cut my skirt even shorter before going out because it looked like it belonged to some kind of office prep. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. Draco was consumed with lust at the sight of me. <laughs> Do you love it? <laughs> oh yeah. I did not expect this to be as fun as it is. This is a this this outfit. I expected to hate this one the most. But you know what? I'm kind of feeling my ebony darkness fantasy. I actually did not have anywhere to go for a few hours, so I hung around at home, uh, put the finishing touches, which is to say the red lace that I finally bought on some of my other outfits. I cut three more sixes out of the red lace and stuck it over my previous attempt at the 666, but the color was better and it blended better with the lace texture of the rest of the skirt. Um, and then I ripped the whole thing up a lot more. I also put some red lace around the corset belt I bought just to spice it up and to match the 666 on the skirt, uh, but I only secured it with safety pins because I need to take it off from one of the other outfits. Don't worry about it, it's all coming together. It's a, the vision, the vision is happening. Can you see it? I also had this this absolutely perfect little lace scrap lying around. So I would like to introduce my new Maya Immortal OC, Antichrist Murder Boy Dementia Ravenway. He's Ebony's son, he has piercing white fangs and entrancing blue orbs. Fan art highly encouraged. Should I have been embarrassed to look like this in the year 2021? Yes, probably. Not because I was dressed alternative, uh, but because I was dressed in one girl's very specific alternative taste that might've been vaguely fashionable 15 years ago. I know obviously that some aspects of early mid 2000s emo have come back into style, but not like this. However, I did get a compliment on my hair from a Starbucks barista, so who's to say? Maybe all of the preps were quietly envying me. I get a sparkle. No. Yes. No. Ebony would not sparkle. I feel like she would just burn to death in the sunlight. After warming up a little bit with this outfit, I, it's, it was time to take things up a notch. I changed into a low cut black top, a black corset with red lace around it, and a black lace skirt that was ripped and said 666 on the butt. I put on black fishnets and black combat boots. Draco was wearing a leather jacket on top of an MCR t-shirt, and he was wearing black eyeliner. You got something to fucking say? Nope. This is totally normal. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm dressing this way forever now. Not gonna lie, I did get a little spooked every time I saw my reflection in like the shop windows. Ebony's fashion sense is, it's too galaxy brain for society. For Shoppers Drug Mart, perhaps even for me, I have now lived in her skin and even I don't claim to fully understand this. However, one thing I do know is that Ebony thinks she is the hottest shit in the entire world. And it was impossible not to channel a little bit of that while I was out because Jesus fuck, I had 666 on my ass. What else was I supposed to do? Day two. I just fixed my little ammo bangs. Welcome to Ebony Darkness Day 2. Once again, we have our live studio audience in the house. This is my, the, there is more purple in my hair this time look. In retrospect, maybe should have bought another pack of purple hair extensions, but this is the best that I managed to do. So it's more purple than before. The makeup look that I will be wearing 
for my last two outfits is pretty much exactly the same as the first one. I've already done my horrific white foundation. The difference this time is that instead of red eyeshadow and black lipstick, it's black eyeshadow and red lipstick. But I thought I would sit down and say, hi, hello, how are ya? Day one was fun. I genuinely really enjoyed day one. I feel like I've always had the suspicion that I might be the sort of person who wouldn't mind looking ridiculous in public for the sake of a good time, but YouTube has really given me the opportunity to prove that, you know, between the long Furby shenanigans, the Converse pants. I've always loved Halloween and dressing up and putting on costumes and being someone else. I mean, I'm gay, obviously. That seems like kind of a requirement. I might just be happy with something like this for this look. Okay, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, I'm gonna do this on the other eye. What spooks me a little bit as I like side-eye my own reflection in the mirror about this right now, like before the ebony costume, just the hair and the makeup is like, this is kind of like my middle school dream self right here. So it is kind of fun for me to finally get to uh, to be this person that I was too shy and depressed to be in middle school. I don't think I'm gonna to wanna to pull it off full time at 22, but it is fun. It is extremely fun. Okay, that was actually extremely fast to do. That's what I love about messy emo makeup is this took me like five minutes and like it's, it's, the, it's the look. It's, it's the look for this. Absolutely nothing on the eyebrows except some chunks of foundation. I put on a long sexy black dress with red lace and a black corset around it and a slit up the leg and black high heeled boots. Around my neck was a pentagram necklace and I spray painted my hair with purple. It was actually really cold that day because we're in this lovely season in Canada where every day is a different season. So I brought a jacket with me but it kind of felt like cheating so I eventually embraced a brisk jaunt. Where are you running? I saw some preps drinking period and accurate bubble tea at the restaurant and I stuck my middle finger up at them. Draco and I got dumplings with gothic black mushrooms in them and blood on the side. <laughs> Crotch. <laughs> You're too hot still. I got napkins everywhere. You're littering. I'm not littering. Ebony darkness eats a momo. You heard it here first? I suppose. What's your rating? 10 out of 10. I like them. The kids screaming in the distance. Yeah, because I'm so terrifying and gothic, they just can't handle it. Mm. And also with a mask on, nothing scarier than the real world. <laughs> put that away. <laughs> Later, I put on a fishnet top under an MCR t-shirt, a black and white plaid skirt, and black fishnets. In my ears, I put on a pair of skull earrings and one cross earring because Draco stole the other one. I also put on black combat boots. I was supposed to wear the heels with this outfit, but I actually had a lot of walking to do, so I wore the combat boots again. It's okay, don't worry, the heels are still making an appearance. Draco and I went on a date. We drank some blood and gave each other tattoos in the park. Next stop, Gladstone Avenue. Now, dumplings are indeed delicious, but the only thing I remember Ebony eating canonically in my immortal is Count Chocula cereal with blood and a glass of blood on the side. Problem with that is that Count Chocula cereal was discontinued in 2010, only making a brief return as a Halloween special in 2019, so I settled for the closest thing that our local gentrified corner store had to offer. Yes, GMO. Yes, sugar. <laughs> yes, gluten. Go, Ebony. What does the artist have to say about it? <laughs> what is to be said? It's art. Delectable. Would you like to partake? I don't know, you're dressed a little bit preppy today there, Antichrist. I don't know if you're allowed any Count Chocula cereal with blood. At the end of it all, I, I have found myself hoping that it was not a troll fic, that my immortal and Ebony were not created as some kind of joke. And I'm starting to believe that it wasn't, because yes, it's completely absurd. Everything about my immortal is completely absurd, but there is also something so earnest about it. As someone who was writing terrible fan fiction in middle school and who yearned to be cool and goth, but settled for a couple skull t-shirts because my mom would let me wear fishnets because she thought it was a fetish thing, I'm over it. I can so clearly imagine the kid responsible for this. And I like her. And I like Ebony. And I like what she represents. I like that this character is just such a blatant wish fulfillment. Just so proudly obnoxious. So unapologetic. I have never felt so cringe culture is dead in this Chili's Tonight as I do now, dressed as Ebony Darkness to Mentor Ravenway, eating my Count Chocula cereal with blood. There's actually just blood left. I, I ate the cereal because I didn't want it to get soggy. 
There's like a whole five minutes of footage that I'm gonna have to edit out of me just fucking eating cereal. Remember to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can support me over on Patreon as well. I do live Q and A's over there every single Wednesday. Merch is also in the description below. We got sweaters, we got buttons and stickers. We got all kinds of fun stuff. And finally, don't forget to draw some fan art of Antichrist Murder Boy Dementia Ravenway. And I will see you in another video very soon.